Hey class, this video is on rotation. We just finished reflection. This is the new transformation that we're gonna be talking about, um, where it is congruent. Now, a couple things that we have to talk about. For reflection, there was a line of reflection, we, and there was different lines that we could use. For rotation, we don't have a line. We need a point. This is called a point for the center of rotation. Now, for us, it's always going to be the origin. Um, for the most part, so just center rotation, just write origin next to it. All right, that's where the x-axis meets the y-axis. And center rotation is very important. So like this little toy here, um, if I were to rotate this thing, it depends where the center rotation is. It feels like the, on the edge of the tail, um, then when I rotate it, like it would just kind of form this circular arc. But if the center rotation was like in the center of this thing, it would just kind of rotate like this. So the way that what our center rotation is, um, is pretty important, whether it's on an object or away from an object. We also need an angle rotation. We're going to be focusing on three angle rotations. Um, whenever we rotate something, it's always going to be counterclockwise, so the opposite way of a clock. And I'm going to abbreviate it for our notes as CCW, counterclockwise. Okay. Um, we're using three angles. Um, I have it right over here. I'm just going to go ahead and label the quadrants. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, three, and then four. Yeah. Our first is that we're going to be rotating it 90 degrees. So underneath this arc, we put 90 degrees. So we, we dealt with, with right angles when we had, uh, when we used Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. Um, the next one is if we add 90 to 90, that's equal to 180. So that's from here to here. Uh, and you may notice that 180 is a straight line. So we're gonna put our degree symbol. That's where like it looks like an exponent of zero. Um, next one and our last one that we're really gonna be focusing on is 100 plus 90, which is 270. 270 degrees. So it takes up three of these quadrants. And just the last one, we're, we're actually not doing 360, uh, but I'll just demonstrate it here. 360, where it goes, where it goes full circle. Um, the reason we're not rotating 360 is because when you rotate, it goes all the way around. You just get to its original position and we'll just get the same point. So no, it's kind of uh, redundant. So rotation is tough. Um, so it's going to be very important important for us to notice the rules and remember the rules um, and also just note like how we actually rotate it based on quadrants. Okay, so for 90, if we rotate something 90 degrees, we pretty much just move one quadrant clockwise, counterclockwise. The rule for this, and I'm just going to give it to you, is there's two things that happen. A rotation switches x and y so wherever they're at they just switch but it makes something the opposite the one that it makes the opposite is the y so how does this look so first of all i'm going to switch x and y so i put y over here x over here but i make y the opposite so y is in the first position i'm going to make it i'm going to put a negative in front just meaning that it's going to if it's positive it's negative and if it's negative it becomes positive for the image so let's go ahead and determine what does that coordinate look like uh, on this mapping, and then we'll figure out from a, a graph. Okay, so I'm going to draw a coordinate. We don't have too much room. So what I do is I switch the position. So X, let's begin with that. It's in the first position. After that, it goes in the second position over an order pair. So two just goes right here. And the question is, what do I write in this open first position? Right, we have Y, but then it became negative Y. So here I have negative five, it becomes the opposite. The opposite of negative five is positive five. So that, that's that's just the, that's gonna be this point rotated 90 degrees. So let's go ahead, I already have that coordinate. Two negative five is already noted right over here. It's a point and I put letter A next to it. I'm gonna put graph five, positive two. So that's five to the right, one, two, three, four, five, two up. So that's where it should be, and I'm just gonna label this as A prime. Now, it's true that for this, it is one quadrant counterclockwise, right? It was a, the point A is in this quadrant, but now it's, if we go clockwise, 
Uh, from the fourth quadrant, it goes to the first quadrant. Okay, so that's true. How we can kind of demonstrate whether this is truly 90 degrees is since the origin is our center of rotation, I'm going to draw a line from here to our pre-image and from our, the origin to the image, right? Does that look like it's 90 degrees? Um, yes, it does. I'm just going to write 90 degrees right there. Uh, now, a couple of things about this is that a and A prime, they're what we call equidistant to the origin, meaning they're the same distance um, to the origin, right? I mean, it, rotations are, are congruence, meaning it's same shape, same size. It preserves the same distance, okay? So that's one way, or actually two ways to validate whether that is in a correct position. So definitely remember the rule. Um, now, while you're watching this, try to figure out a way to, that you could remember the rule. There's a lot of rules that are going on, right? Switch, we make the Y the opposite. So if you have an idea of like making a math rap or something, uh, or a little jingle, let me know. Like, rotate it 90 degrees. Something, I don't know, but like try to figure that out. All right, uh, for rotating 180 degrees, right? It forms a straight line, but the rule here, a rotation changes the signs of X and Y. So X and Y over here, what that becomes, and I'm just gonna rewrite X and Y. But since it changes both those signs, I'm gonna put a negative X and a negative Y, meaning both will be the opposite. So for this, we still have the same, same point that we're starting with, two, negative five, right? It's the same as the first example. But I'm gonna make it the opposite of positive two, that becomes negative two. And the opposite of negative five becomes positive five. So I already have the pre-image here. Let's go and grab the image of negative two, five. That is two to the left and five up. I'm gonna put A prime. So to see if this is truly 180 degrees, is we connect A to the origin, and then from the origin to our image, right? Is that 180 degrees? Yes, because it forms, it's a, it's a straight line. All right, so pretty much there, you just switch the signs. So we're gonna do a lot of practice, so hopefully you guys can remember this. And then for 270 degrees, a rotation, again, switches X and Y. But in this case, you're not making Y the opposite, we're making X the opposite. So how this looks like, switch them, so this becomes Y and X but make X the opposite and put a minus sign in front of it. So what does this look like? So we're gonna switch them. I'm gonna put negative five, positive two, but I have to make X the opposite. So right now X is two. What's the opposite of two? It's negative two. So again, I already have the pre-image graphed. Graphing negative five, negative two, that's five to the left and then two down. So I'm gonna put, yeah, I'll put this in black. This is A prime. So I'm gonna draw A to the origin and then A prime also to the origin. Remember, we're graphing counterclockwise. So right over here, this is 270 degrees. So right over here, it says three quadrants counterclockwise. So right now we're here, we go one, two, three. So despite graphing anything, you know that the image needs to be in this quadrant, right? You can just count. Just like for 180 degrees, two quadrants counterclockwise. So if we're here, just go clockwise, counterclockwise, one, two. A prime has to be somewhere there. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. But we're going to be practicing a lot in class. Uh, let me know if you guys got questions. Bye.